endocrine system histology is the topic today and we are studying histology from Inder B. Singh chapter number 20 it is going to be and the endocrine tissue is made up essentially of cells that produce secretions which are poured directly into the blood you know, we have uh, at many places in the body a collection of cells which are heavily supplied by blood vessels uh, that is the capillaries and whatever is produced within these cells is then entered directly into the blood and this uh, collection of cell is therefore known as endocrine tissue or to secretion is missing nickel ray that secretion is known as hormones along with the autonomic nervous system the endocrine organs coordinate and control the metabolic activities of the internal environment of the body so we know that uh, the autonomic nervous system sympathetic as well as parasympathetic is the key system to regulate bodily functions and particularly those functions which are involuntary in action similarly hormones are also very very important to perform homeostatic function that body ka internal jo environment hai wo maintained rahe endocrine tissues are highly vascular and it makes sense because the tissues produce uh, hormones which enter directly into the blood and therefore plenty of blood supply is mandatory therefore endocrine tissues are highly vascular they have a lot of blood vessels the secretory pole of an endocrine cell is towards the wall of the capillary in exocrine glands so it, it's a simple thing because there is no duct in here otherwise if there is a ductular pattern then these cells hain, they uh, have their secretory portion towards the duct but in endocrine system mein, they have their secretory portions of the cell towards the capillary so that directly whatever hormone is being released it can directly blood mein enter ho sake, hai? so we have to uh, spend a few minutes on understanding uh, some basics of hormones which travel through blood to the target cells now what do we mean by the target cell? So for example, insulin hai. Insulin is a hormone or wo produce hota hai by the beta cells of the pancreas and it is released into the blood. Ab jab wo blood mein aata hai, to insulin body ke har cell pe kaam karta hai. So jis cell pe insulin ja ke kaam karega, those cells are called the target cells. Hai? And whose functioning they may influence profoundly and that is the job of the hormones. Hormones go act on the target cells and perform their functions a hormone acts on the cells that bear specific receptors for them some hormones act only on one organ or a single type of cell while the other hormones have very widespread function just have my insulin ke example there are so many cells of the body have uh, receptors for insulin so insulin ka jo action hai wo widespread hoga puri body mein different cells par hoga but there are some uh, examples of hormones which perform their action only on particular cells kyunki unke jo receptors hain us hormone ko bind karne ke liye koi na koi receptor hoga so the game is that if this is the cell there will be a receptor for a particular hormone to ye receptor agar sirf uh, designated cells par hoga bahut limited cells par hoga to ye hormone unhi cells par bind karke action karega tamam cells per nine okay on the basis of their chemical nature hormones can be subdivided into different classes the first one mentioned here is the amino acid derivative so these are the hormones which are made up of amino acids so they are uh, you know uh, short chains of amino acids such as adrenaline uh, nor adrenaline thyroxine not even short chains but in the end product hai, wo particularly kisi na kisi amino acid ka derivative hai. because if short chains hai, then we call them small peptides and the examples include vasopressin and caffeine and thyroid releasing hormone then there are some larger proteins so up to now we are all made up of amino acids obviously these are amino acid derivatives these are combination of a few amino acids and when many of the amino acids combine together they make a larger protein chain and this is then the protein hormone and the example include insulin parath hormone thyroid stimulating hormone and then there is another class which is derived from uh, steroids cholesterol rings so for example progesterone estrogen testosterone cortisol so these are all the steroid hormones so uh, this is one of the very very important questions of examiners uh, viva may be or written exam may be okay, what are the different types of hormones so these are the different classes of hormones or in key examples up go yeah don't you now distribution of the endocrine cells endocrine cells are distributed in three major ways some organs are entirely endocrine in function they are referred to as endocrine glands or duct less gland if a duct hogi, toh they become the exocrine gland those traditionally included under this category are the hypophysis cerebri or the pituitary so obviously pituitary kahe ya hypophysis cerebri kahe equivalent terms hai, ek hi baat hai. the pineal gland 
the thyroid gland the parathyroid gland as well as the suprarenal ya suprarenal ka dusra naam kya hai adrenal gland so ye tamam wo glands hain which are all made up of only endocrine tissue so they are completely endocrine glands then there is a group of endocrine cells present in organs that have other function yani there is a bigger niche of tissue jiske andar embedded hai ek group of cells which perform the endocrine job several examples of such tissue have been described elsewhere in the histology textbook they include islets of pancreas so agar pancreas ko aap study kare to pancreas uh, पूरे का पूरा सिर्फ एंडोक्राइन पोर्शन पर कंपोज नहीं होता सो सपोज इफ दिस इज द पैंक्रियाज देर इज अ डक्ट इन पैंक्रियाज एज वेल विच इज कॉल्ड द पैंक्रियाटिक डक्ट जो ड्यूडनम में जाके ओपन होती है और इसके जरिए बहुत सारे एंजाइम्स अमाइलेज लाइपेज इस तरह की चीजें ड्यूडनम में एंटर होती हैं इस डक्ट के जरिए बट विद इन द पैंक्रियाज देर आर यू नो ग्रुप ऑफ सेल्स विच आर कॉल्ड आईलेट्स और ये जो आईलेट्स हैं दे आर एंडोक्राइन इन फंक्शन एंड दे प्रोड्यूस इंसुलिन विच इज डायरेक्टली एंटरिंग इन टू द ब्लड एंड नॉट गोइंग इन टू द डक्ट ओके सो दिस इज अ टिपिकल एग्जाम्पल then there are interstitial cells of testes in the testicular structure there are so many different cells available usme se ek interstitial cell hai they produce hormone the follicles and corpora lutea of the ovary ovary is again composed of a lot of different categories of cells or these particular cells are endocrine in function so these are uh, those examples where the endocrine tissue is embedded within the exocrine stuff और सम अदर टिश्यू स्ट्रक्चर सो पूरे का पूरे जैसे टेस्टिस है उसका पूरे बहुत सारे और भी तरह के सेल्स हैं बट बीच बीच में देर आर इंटरस्टिशियल सेल्स विच आर कंसिडर्ड एंडोक्राइन आइसोलेटेड एंडोक्राइन ग्लैंड में भी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड इन द एपिथीलियल लाइनिंग ऑफ एन ऑर्गन सच सेल्स आर सीन मोस्ट टिपिकली इन द गट similar cells are also present in the epithelium of respiratory passage recent studies show that these cells in many other locations in the body produce amines that have endocrine function many of these amine act as neurotransmitters or neuromodulators they are widely distributed and grouped together as neuroendocrine system or amine precursor update uh, uptake and decarboxylation cell system epute system so aap neuroendocrine terminology kahein yahi terminology use kare ya isko epute cell system kahein it's the same thing aur basically ye hai kya ki there is a normal epithelium going on aur ek beech mein cell aisa hoga which belongs to the neuro or a group of cells which belong to the endocrine function and this is known as the neuroendocrine system so these type of cells endocrine cells are embedded within the normal epithelium gut mein bhi paye jate hain respiratory system mein bhi paye jate hain so they are absolutely different type of cells not the normal epithelium लेकिन एपिथिलियम के बीच में ही होते हैं और इनका काम है हार्मोन प्रोड्यूस करना सो so, ये तीनों टर्मिनोलॉजीज आपको पता होनी चाहिए ये तीन तरह के डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन पैटर्न्स हैं वो तीन तरह के डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन पैटर्न्स में पहला पैटर्न है कि पूरे का पूरा टिश्यू विल बी एंडोक्राइन टिश्यू देन द सेकेंड पैटर्न इज के देर विल बी अदर सेल्स एंड एम्बेडेड विल बी द Uh, the, the endocrine tissue and the third category is that amongst the epithelial cells there are some endocrine cells okay ab hum kuch uh, endocrine uh, organs ki baat karenge unme kis kaun kaun se cells maujood hain aur wo kaun kaun se hormones produce karte hain so let us first start discussing the histology of hypophysis cerebri hypophysis cerebri ka dusra naam kya hai pituitary gland so this is also known as pituitary gland it's a very important gland a very small one the size of p it is suspended from the floor of the third ventricle by a narrow funnel shaped stroke called the infundibulum and lies in a depression on the upper surface of the sphenoid bone called cella tercica so just bony cavity mein ye hota hai that is called cella tercica and that is a cavity in the uh, or the depression in the sphenoid bone aur jo iski stalk hai jo isko brain ke sath connect karti hai that stalk is known as infundibulum so if you see here here will be the structure of brain and this is the uh, hypophysis cerebri and this is the infundibulum which is connecting the pituitary gland with the brain okay the hypophysis cerebri is one of the most important endocrine glands it produces several hormones some of which profoundly influence the activities of other endocrine tissues and therefore it is or it was actually referred to as the master gland of the body because this debate that which one is the master gland is uh, pretty much controversial some people say that maybe hypothalamus is the master gland because it controls the job of the pituitary and pituitary in turn controls the job of so many other glands okay but anyways many people still know pituitary gland as the master gland of the body 
इट्स ओन एक्टिविटी इज इन्फ्लुएंस बाई हाइपोथैलमस दिस इज वॉट आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट कि हाइपोथैलमस पिच्यूट्री ग्लैंड को कंट्रोल कर रहा है सो हु डू यू थिंक इज द मास्टर हाइपोथैलमस या पिच्यूट्री सो दैट्स अ डिबेटेबल स्टाफ अब हाइपोफिसिस सेलिब्राई के कौन कौन से पार्ट्स हैं द पिच्यूट्री ग्लैंड हैड बीन डिवाइडेड इन पास्ट इन टू एन एंटीरियर पार्ट विच इज़ नोन एज पार्स एंटीरियर एन इंटरमीडिएट पार्ट विच इज़ कॉल्ड पार्स इंटरमीडिया एंड अ पोस्टीरियर पार्ट विच इज़ कॉल्ड पार्स पोस्टीरियर सो ये तो बहुत आसान सी बात है विच इज़ ऑल्सो नोन एज पार्स नर्वोजा फॉर अ रीजन वी विल टॉक अबाउट दिस पार्केट फॉर द मोमेंट सो देर थ्री डिफरेंट पार्ट्स एंटीरियर मिडल एंड पोस्टीरियर पार्ट ऑफ द पिच्यूट्री ग्लैंड ओके इफ यू लुक एट द डायग्राम हेयर यू कैन सी दिस इज द पार्स इंटीरियर the big thing that's the pars posterior and uh, we should have the pars intermedia which is there between anterior and posterior this green white bit okay right let's move on the pars anterior which is also called the pars distalis and the pars intermedia are both made up of the cells having a direct secretory function they are collectively referred to as adenohypophysis yani adenohypophysis is the combination of pars anterior and pars intermedia so this bit is known as adenohypophysis so i can say that adenohypophysis is divided into pars anterior as well as pars intermedia okay an extension of pars anterior surrounds the central nervous core of the infundibulum because of its tubular shape this extension is known as pars tuberalis so pars tuberalis is nothing but an extension of the pars anterior the pars tuberalis is part of the adenohypophysis so if you look here this is pars tuberalis around the infundibulum it is tubular in shape and it is an extension of the pars anterior so adenohypophysis ka part uh, pars tuberalis bhi hai so three things in adenohypophysis और क्या क्या तीन चीजें पार्स एंटीरियर पार्स इंटरमीडिया एंड पार्स टूबरालिस the pars posterior contains numerous nerve fibers because it contains a lot of nerve fibers therefore it is also known as pars nervosa maine yahan pe ek question mark aur aap se kaha tha ki isko park kar lijiye ki why the pars posterior is also known as pars nervosa the reason for this is now clear that it contains a lot of nerve fibers it is directly continuous with the central core of the infundibulum which is made up of nervous tissue the two parts are together referred to as neurohypophysis theek okay? hai so um adeno hypophysis which contains anterior pituitary anterior part intermediate pituitary and tuberalis and then the remaining bit is neuro hypophysis the area in the floor of the third ventricle immediately adjoining the attachment uh, to it of the infundibulum is called median eminence some authorities include median eminence also into the neuro hypophysis so you can see in this diagram there is median eminence which is in connection with the pars posterior and the infundibulum so this bit is the neuro hypophysis ye do terms aapko yaad rakhni hai the pituitary gland is by and large divided into neuro neuro hypophysis and adeno hypophysis the neuro hypophysis contained pars posterior and the nerve fibers in the infundibulum and probably the median eminence as well while the adeno hypophysis contains pars anterior and pars tuberalis and pars intermedia okay so that's an important division which you have to remember and uh, again many people ask this in exams so let us talk about uh, so two different parts i'm again and again repeating pituitary gland is divided into adeno hypophysis and the other one is neuro hypophysis to ab in dono ke bare mein hum padhenge inki histology kya hai let's first start discussing the adeno hypophysis adeno hypophysis mein maine aapko kya bataya kitni cheeze hain three stuff Uh, there is pars anterior there is uh, pars uh, intermedia and there is pars tuberalis okay so the pars anterior first the pars anterior can uh, it it composed of cords of cells separated by fenestrated sinusoids several types of cells responsible for production of different hormones are present so there are for example chromophil cells these chromophil cells have highly bright staining nucleus and granules in the cytoplasm there is another category of cells called chromophobe cells in which granules are not present and the chromophil cells are further classified into acidophils Uh, which uh, stain just make granules stain with the acidic dye and the basophils in which the granules are stained with the basic dye such as hematoxylin basophil granules are also periodic acid shift stain positive so wo is stain ke sath bhi stain ho jate hain the acidophil cells are also called alpha cells and the basophils are called beta cells so b for basophil b for beta that's an easy way to remember okay electron microscopic examination shows that both acidophil and basophil contain abundant dense 
cord vesicles in the cytoplasm. Both acidophil and basophils can be divided into subtypes based on the size and shape of the granules. These findings have been correlated with those obtained by immunological methods. These methods allow cells responsible for production of individual hormones to be categorized. So we are discussing uh, adeno hypothesis. Adeno hypothesis ke teen components hain jis mein se hum pehla component discuss kar rahe hain parse anterior jis mein chromophyll cells hain aur chromophobe cells hain chromophyll cells wo hain jin mein granules hain phir ye acidophil category ke hain aur basophil category ke hain so that's what we are now discussing now some types of acidophil cells acidophil cells ki uh, kuch categories hain aur phir basophil cells ki kuch examples hain to kis category mein कौन सा सेल टाइप है और वो कौन सा हार्मोन प्रोड्यूस करता है ये आपके लिए इंपॉर्टेंट है सो so, एसिडोफिल में फॉर एग्जांपल देयर आर सोमैरोट्रॉफ्स दे प्रोड्यूस सोमैरोट्रॉपिक हार्मोन व्हिच इज आल्सो नोन एज एसटीएच और ग्रोथ हार्मोन इन द सिंपल वर्ड्स दिस हार्मोन कंट्रोल्स द बॉडी ग्रोथ स्पेशली बिफोर द प्यूबर्टी एसिडोफिल की एक और एग्जांपल है मेमोट्रॉफ एंड मेमोट्रॉफ व्हिच आर आल्सो कॉल्ड लेक्टोट्रॉफ्स प्रोड्यूस मेमोट्रॉपिक हार्मोन और लैक्टिक हार्मोन और एलटीएच व्हिच स्टिमुलेट ग्रोथ एंड एक्टिविटी ऑफ द फीमेल मेमोरी ग्लैंड सो दीस category of cells are both acidophil basophil mein kaun kaun si categories hain basophils contain corticotrophs which is important for the secretion of acth jo cortisol excess ke liye important hai then uh, thyrotrophs which is important for tsh secretion then gonadotrophs which are important for you know male or female ke jo uh, gender associated hormones hain Th those are the ones such as the fsh uh, follicle stimulating hormone or the luteinizing hormone which is important for ovulation so all these types of cells are included in the category of basophil cells so remember what we are talking about is that there are two uh, points to remember adeno hypothesis and neuro hypothesis these are the two parts of pituitary if somebody ask you what are the two parts of pituitary number one there is adeno hypothesis and then there is neuro hypothesis adeno hypothesis ke kaun kaun se parts hain there is anterior part there is intermediate part and then there is a posterior part anterior part ki hum jab baat karte hain so there are chromophiles and then there are chromophobes जो क्रोमोफिल्स हैं दे कंटेन एसिडोफिल्स एंड बेजोफिल्स ओके एसिडोफिल्स एंड बेजोफिल्स सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर द एग्जांपल्स ऑफ एसिडोफिल्स एज वेल एज द बेजोफिल्स ओके दैट्स ऑल एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट डिस्कशन सो क्रोमोफिल्स में एसिडोफिल और बेजोफिल थे लेट्स नाउ टॉक अबाउट द क्रोमोफोब सेल्स दीज सेल्स डू नॉट स्टेन डार्कली बिकॉज इनमें ग्रेन्यूल्स नहीं होते इम्यूनो साइटोकेमिस्ट्री शोज दैट दे रिप्रेजेंट सेल्स सिमिलर टू वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ क्रोमोफिल्स मैंशन अबाउ बट दे डू नॉट कंटेन द ग्रैन okay now let's talk about uh, the pars uh, tuberalis the pars tuberalis consists mainly of the undifferentiated cells some acidophil some basophil and a mixture of these cells and then there is pars intermedia jo pars intermedia hai this is poorly developed in human hypothesis in ordinary preparations the most conspicuous feature uh, is the presence of the cells uh, of the colloid filled vesicles these vesicles are remnants of the ratke pouch beta cells um other secretory cells and some chromophobe cells are present and uh, the pars intermedia is notorious for the production of melanocyte stimulating hormone which increases the pigmentation of the skin so that's an important thing associated with pars intermedia Uh, other cells also produce acdh endorphins are also present so these are some of the secretions which are released by the pars intermedia but if you notice jo adeno hypothesis hai the adeno hypothesis jisme uh, pars anterior hai pars intermedia hai aur pars tuberalis hai the the most developed one is the pars anterior पार्स एंटीरियर में देर आर क्रोमोफिल्स क्रोमोफोब्स एंड क्रोमोफिल्स की फिर कई कैटेगरीज हैं एसिडोफिल्स एंड बेजोफिल्स सो दैट इज द मेजर सिक्रीटर ऑफ द पिचूट्री ग्लैंड इफ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एडिनो हाइपोफिसिस ठीक है अच्छा जी अब ये कुछ एडिड इन्फॉर्मेशन है कि द सोमैटोट्रॉप्स कंस्टिट्यूट अबाउट फिफ्टी परसेंट मेमोट्रॉप्स अबाउट ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट दीज आर द डिफरेंट परसेंटेज ऑफ डिफरेंट सेल्स ओके सो दैट्स दीज नंबर आई मीन नॉट सुपर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू टू रिमेंबर बट इट्स अ गुड आइडिया you can go through this added information anyways uh, so ye sari kahani thi adeno hypothesis ki now
the second part of the pituitary gland which is known as the neurohypophysis i told you ke jo neurohypophysis hai it is composed of uh, a few parts first one the pars posterior and then there is the infundibular part and then there are the median eminence so jo pars uh, posterior hai iske bare mein baat karte hain which is an important component of the neurohypophysis pars posterior also called pars nervosa because it contains many nerve fibers The pars posterior contains numerous unmyelinated nerve fibers, which are the axons of neurons located in the hypothalamus. So, its structure is such that this is the uh, pars posterior, yeah, this is the neurohypophysis. और ये जो न्यूरो हाइपोफिसिस का इनफंडीबुलम है इसमें से एक्चुअली एग्जॉन्स गुजर रहे हैं सो यू सी हियर दीज आर द सेल बॉडीज प्रेजेंट इन द हाइपोथैलमस दिस द हाइपोथैलमस हियर दीज आर द सेल बॉडीज अब ये सेल बॉडी है न्यूरॉन की तो इसका एग्जॉन भी होगा ना वो एग्जॉन ऐसे नीचे की तरफ आता है और ट्रेवल करके पार्स पोस्टीरियर में आता है सो इट बेसिकली कंटेन्स द न्यूरॉन की एक्सटेंशन यानी एग्जॉनल एक्सटेंशन हैं जिनकी सेल बॉडी एक्चुअली हाइपोथैलमस में है ठीक है मोस्ट ऑफ द नर्व फाइबर्स अराइज इन द सुपरा ऑप्टिक एंड पैरा वेंट्रिकुलर न्यूक्लियस सो हाइपोथैलेमस के अंदर ये दो न्यूक्लियाए हैं सुपरा ऑप्टिक न्यूक्लियस एंड पैरा वेंट्रिकुलर न्यूक्लियस सुपरा ऑप्टिक न्यूक्लियस में भी एग्जॉन्स uh, निकल रहे होंगे ऑब्वियसली फ्रॉम द सेल बॉडीज और पैरा वेंट्रिकुलर में भी देर विल बी कलेक्शन ऑफ सेल बॉडीज जिनमें से एग्जॉन्स निकल के नीचे ट्रेवल करेंगे ओके सिचुएटेड बिटवीन दीज एग्जॉन्स आर द सपोर्टिंग सेल्स विच आर नॉन एज पिचुसाइड सो पिचुसाइड आर सपोर्टिंग सेल्स दे आर नॉट पर्टिकुलरली न्यूरोनल सेल्स but supporting cells these cells have long dendritic processes many of which lie parallel to the nerve fibers the axons descend into the pars posterior from the hypothalamus and in the terminal closely to the capillaries so the pars posterior of the hypophysis hypophysis matlab pituitary gland and pars posterior matlab uh, um, jo neuro hypophysis hai uska posterior part is associated with the release of blood uh, in blood two types of hormone number one is vasopressin and number two is oxytocin जो वेजोप्रेसिन है विच इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एंटी डायोरेटिक हार्मोन इट हेल्प्स इन दी वाटर रीअब्जॉर्बन फ्रॉम द किडनी वाइल दी ऑक्सीटोसिन इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर कॉन्ट्रैक्शन ऑफ स्मूथ मसल्स सच एज प्रेजेंट इन द यूट्रस ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी बल्कि डिलीवरी एंड इजेक्शन ऑफ मिल्क सो दीज टू आर रिलीज फ्रॉम द पार्स पोस्टेरिया और ये जो दोनों हार्मोन है दे आर नॉट प्रोड्यूस इन द हाइपोफिस सेरेब्रा ये पिचुटरी में नहीं बनते दे आर सिंथेसाइज इन द न्यूरोन्स लोकेटेड मेनली इन द सुपरा ऑप्टिक एंड द पैराविकुलर न्यूक्लिया जो कि हाइपोथैलमस में होते हैं वेजोप्रोजिन इज प्रोड्यूज मेनली इन द सुपरा ऑप्टिक न्यूक्लियस एंड ऑक्जिटोसिन इज प्रोड्यूज इन द पैराविकुलर न्यूक्लियस ये जो हम बात कर रहे हैं इसमें सुपरा ऑप्टिक यहाँ वेजोप्रेसिन बनता है ऊपर और वो नीचे आके यहाँ ट्रांसपोर्ट हो जाता है और यहाँ से ब्लड में चला जाता है बिल्कुल ऐसे ही ऑक्सीटोसिन जो है वो वेंटिकुलर न्यूक्लियस में बनता है नीचे एक्जॉन में ट्रेवल करके ब्लड में शामिल हो जाता है सो ऐसा देखने में लग रहा है कि पिचुटरी ग्लैंड से ये दोनों चीजें निकल रही हैं ऑक्सीटोसिन और वेजोप्रेसिन लेकिन वो पिचुटरी में प्रोड्यूस नहीं हो रही है दे आर बींग प्रोड्यूस इन दीज टू न्यूक्लिया और ये न्यूक्लिया कहाँ प्रेजेंट है इन द हाइपोथैलमस ठीक हो गया नाउ दीज सिक्रेशन विच आर बाउंड विद ग्लाइकोजिन प्रोटीन कॉल द न्यूरोन पास डाउन दी एग्जॉन and then from the from the posterior part of the pituitary they enter into the blood the collection of these secretory granules at the terminal portion of the axonal process is called the herring bodies yahan pe ye collect hote hain sare jo hormones bante hain hypothalamus mein here they are released into the capillaries in the region and they enter the general circulation so all this is very clear to you now ke jo anterior pituitary hai usme to cells hain and they are producing something which enters into the blood lekin posterior pituitary की जो प्रोडक्शन है वो हाइपोथैलेमस में है एक्चुअली और हाइपोथैलेमस से वो चीजें बनके नीचे ट्रेवल करती हैं इनटू द पोस्टीरियर पिचुट्री राइट नाउ व्हाट इज द ब्लड सप्लाई ऑफ द हाइपोफिसिस सेरेब्राइ इट इज सप्लाइड बाय द सुपीरियर एंड इंफीरियर ब्रांचेस ऑफ द इंटरनल कैरोटिड आर्टरीज ओके that's actually what you have to remember and in the anatomy we have also discussed the hypothalamo hypophysial portal system so i'm not going to discuss this in detail here because here we are more focused on histology rather than gross anatomy now control of the secretion of hormones of the adeno hypophysis now that is an important topic because हम बार बार ये बात करते हैं कि जो पिचुटरी ग्लैंड है इट इज़ कंसिडर्ड एज द मास्टर ग्लैंड ऑफ द बॉडी व्हिच मींस कि इट कंट्रोल्स फंक्शंस ऑफ अ लॉट ऑफ अदर ग्लैंड्स एंड दिस इज सो ट्रू अभी आपको ये बात समझ में इसलिए आ जानी चाहिए बिकॉज फॉर एग्जांपल हियर वी टॉक्ड अबाउट सम सेल्स सच एज थारोट्रॉफ्स सो थारोट्रॉफ्स आर प्रोड्यूसिंग थारॉयड स्टूमुलेटिंग हॉर्मोन 
और ये जो थायरॉयड स्टिमुलेटिंग हार्मोन इट इज गोइंग टू एक्ट ऑन थायरॉयड ग्लैंड एंड कंट्रोल द फंक्शन ऑफ द थायरॉयड बिल्कुल ऐसे ही देयर आर गोनेटोट्रॉप्स सो फॉलिकुलर स्टिमुलेटिंग हार्मोन ल्यूटिनाइजिंग हार्मोन गो एंड परफॉर्म देयर जॉब ऑन ओवरीज है ना इसी तरह ग्रोथ हार्मोन है इट इज प्रोड्यूस्ड हेयर इन द पिट्यूटरी बट देन परफॉर्म देयर फंक्शन इन सो मेनी अदर प्लेसेस सो दैट्स व्हाई इट इज कॉल्ड द मास्टर ग्लैंड सो अब ये भी तो पता होना चाहिए कि इस मास्टर ग्लैंड का सिक्रीशन कंट्रोल कैसे है एडिनो हाइपोफिसिस में किस तरह से व्हाट आर द मैकेनिज्म्स व्हिच एक्चुअली कंट्रोल द सिक्रीशन फ्रॉम पिट्यूटरी सो द सिक्रीशन ऑफ हार्मोन्स बाय द एडिनो हाइपोफिसिस टेक्स प्लेस अंडर हायर कंट्रोल न्यूरॉन्स इन द हाइपोथैलेमस नोटेबली दोस इन द मीडियन एमिनेंस एंड इन द इनफंडिबुलर न्यूक्लियस द एक्सॉन्स ऑफ दीस न्यूरॉन्स and in relation to the capillaries in the median eminence and in the upper part of the infundibulum different neurons produce a specific releasing factors for each hormone yani agar thyroid stimulating hormone release ho raha hai from the pituitary to hypothalamus se release hoga thyroid releasing hormone to wo aakar ke uh, is pe act karega anterior pituitary pe aur phir ye thyroid stimulating hormone release hoga so basically this is controlled from the higher centers and the higher centers are present in the hypothalamus so actually phir wohi baat hai ki hum kehte hain ki what do you think is the master gland do you think pituitary is the master gland or do you really think that hypothalamus is the master gland so ye mujhe zara link pe jawab deke bataiye ki what do you uh, think is the master gland now these factors are released into the capillaries the portal vessels arising from the capillary carry these factors to the pars anterior so basically jo hypothalamus se uh, jo bhi substances release ho rahe hain which are called the releasing hormones they then enter into the pars anterior aur phir wo uh, yahan pe diffuse out hote hain उन सेल्स को स्टूमुलेट करते हैं और फिर वो सेल्स अपने हार्मोन्स प्रोड्यूस करके ब्लड में निकालते हैं द सिंथेसिस एंड डिस्चार्ज ऑफ रिलीजिंग फैक्टर्स बाय द हाइपोथैलमस इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट कंट्रोल मैकेनिज्म फॉर एंट्री पिचूटरी सिक्रेशन ओके एज दीज न्यूरोन्स सर्व एज इंटरमीडियट इज बिटवीन द नर्वस इम्पल्स एंड हार्मोन सिक्रेशन दे हैव बिन रेफर टू एज द न्यूरो एंडोक्राइन ट्रांसड्यूसर्स तो ये जो हाइपोथैलमस से आ रहे हैं न्यूरॉन्स दे आर कॉल्ड दी न्यूरो एंडोक्राइन ट्रांसड्यूसर्स जो हाइपोथैलमस से सिक्रीट करेंगे चीजों को यानी हार्मोन्स को और कंट्रोल करेंगे सिक्रीशन फ्रॉम दी एंटीरियर पिछुट्री सम सेल्स विच आर नोन एज टेनिसाइड्स प्रेजेंट इन दी एपेंटमा मे ट्रांसपोर्ट रिलीजिंग फैक्टर्स फ्रॉम द न्यूरोन्स इन द सी एस एफ और फ्रॉम द सी एस एफ टू द ब्लड कैपलरी सो टेनिसाइड्स ऑल्सो हैव द जॉब ऑफ ट्रांसफर ऑफ डिफरेंट न्यूरो ट्रांसमीटर्स ओके राइट सो दैट वॉज ऑल अबाउट बेसिकली द थारॉयड ग्लैंड ओके नाउ देर आर सो मेनी डिजीज एसोसिएटेड विद थारॉयड दे हैव मैंशन सम फॉर एग्जाम्पल जाइगेंटिज्म इट इज द ग्रोथ हार्मोन एक्सेस प्रायर टू द एपीफिजल क्लोजर इन द बोन सो थिंग्स आर बेग बोन बेग्स एंड एक्रोमेगली ऑल दीज टाइप ऑफ स्टाफ एक्रोमेगली इज ऑल्सो ग्रोथ हार्मोन एक्सेस एंड दैर इज फॉलोइंग द सिजेशन ऑफ द बोन ग्रोथ um and uh gigantism is basically you know prior to the epiphyseal closer so that there is a difference between the two uh, we will discuss these um, in more detail in pathology lectures diabetes insipidus is associated with uh, you know uh, adh anti diuretic or vaso uh, pressin hormone deficiency again uh, more to be discussed in pathology lectures so what is the crux of our discussion up till now you should be able to tell what are the different parts of pituitary gland and what are the further classification and cell types present in the pituitary gland and what are their secretions okay let us now start talking about another uh, endocrine gland which is the thyroid gland thyroid gland if you recall from the anatomy lecture is a bilobed gland so there is a right lobe and then there is a left lobe or beech mein aise connecting uska isthmus tha सो ये स्ट्रक्चर आपको ग्रॉस एनाडमी का पता है सो टुडे वी हैव टू टॉक अबाउट कि इसके हिस्टोलॉजिकली एंडोक्राइन फीचर्स क्या है थायरॉयड इज यूनिक एज इट स्टोर्स लार्ज क्वांटिटी ऑफ इट्स हार्मोनल सीक्रीशन एक्स्ट्रा सेलुलरली एज कॉलोइड इन कॉन्ट्रास्ट टू दी अदर ग्लैंड विच स्टोर वेरी स्मॉल क्वांटिटीज ऑफ इंट्रा सेलुलर हॉर्मोन सो दिस इज द ब्यूरी ऑफ थारॉयड के थारॉयड ग्लैंड अगर आप ये देखें सो दिस इज द सेक्शन थ्रू थारॉयड दीज लिटल सेल्स दे प्रोड्यूस थारॉयड हॉर्मोन एंड देन दे स्टोर दैम इन फॉर्म ऑफ अ कॉलोइड extra cellularly so this extra cellular deposition and storage is something unique to thyroid gland the thyroid gland is covered with a fibrous capsule ye humne anatomy ke lectures mein already padha hua hai the septa extending into the gland from the capsule divide it into different lobules on microscopic examination this is what we have to discuss now histology uh, each lobule is seen to be made up of aggregation of follicles each follicles 
uh, each follicle is lined by follicular cells that rest on the basement membrane. The follicle has a cavity which is filled with the homogeneous colloid material which contains the stored thyroid hormone. So if you look here, uh, that is uh, the colloidal material in the middle or in surrounding me cells hai, these are the follicular cells and these cells are resting on a basement membrane. So that is the overall structure. So this is a follicle for example which contains the follicular cells and the colloid in the middle okay so that's the arrangement of the thyroid internally cellular composition is tarah se hai the spaces between the follicles are filled with the stroma or delicate connective tissue in which there are numerous capillaries and lymphatics so that's a follicle that's a follicle so these are for example the capillaries and the lymphatics and uh, there are also some parafollicular cells unke bare mein bhi baat karenge apart from the follicular cells so the follicular cells are these ones all these which are part of the follicle jo aise rounded follicle bana rahe so ye jo sare cells hain these are follicular cells lekin kuch follicles ke beech mein bhi cells hain which are known as parafollicular cell these ones for example so ye jo parafollicular cells hain they uh, are also known as c cells which intervene between the follicular cells and the basement membrane they may also lie in the intervals between the follicles connective tissue stroma surrounding the follicles contain dense capillary network and obviously lymphatics and sympathetic nerves so connective tissue mein yahi cheeze hoti hain sari uh, lymphatics honge again see this is a group of parafollicular cells so parafollicular cell uh, is Uh, you know, in addition to the follicular cells, अब जो follicular cells हैं thyroid gland के they vary in their shape depending on the level of their activity. ये बड़ी interesting बात है कब ये cuboidal होंगे कब ये columnar हो जाएंगे it depends upon के उनका activity status क्या है Normally the cells are cuboidal and the colloid in the middle um, is moderate in amount. When inactive, the cells are flat. So flat honge, jab bilkul inactive honge, normally they are uh, cuboidal, and the follicles are distended in abundant colloid. Obviously, jab ye uh, uh, you know resting stage me honge, so they are squamous. When the cells are highly active, however, they become columnar. So ye three states apko batani chahiye ki there is a basement membrane. So this, for example, if you see, this is inactive. They are flat. These are moderately active. They are cuboidal. This is highly active. This is where they are. Are actually like columnar type of arrangement you see so this is flat cell inactive status these are cuboidal cells moderately active and these are columnar cells highly active so this is important for you to understand different follicles may show different levels of activity ab for example thyroid gland ka agar aap section dekhein so ek hi section mein at the moment you see a lot of different follicles so is waqt aapko bahut sare follicles dikh rahe hain ek follicle ye hai ek follicle ye hai ek follicle ye ek follicle ye ye sare follicles hain ye possible hai ki kisi ek follicle mein there is cuboidal arrangement of cells which means this is moderately active it is also possible on the same time that some of the follicles have columnar arrangement of cells which means that particular follicle is highly active okay now with electron microscopy a follicular cell shows the presence of apical microvilli abundant granular endoplasmic reticulum prominent golgi body because they are producing hormones so ye sari machinery in mein zyada hoti hai lysosomes microtubule microfilaments the apical part of the cell contains many secretory vacuoles because ye jo apical region hai cells ka this region yahan pe secretory granules hi nikal kar bahar colloid mein aayenge to hormone yahan store hoga okay so these are all important histological features the activity of the follicular cells is influenced by thyroid stimulating hormone kaha banta hai ye in the pituitary gland produced by the hypophysis cerebri which is the pituitary there is some evidence to indicate that their activity may also be increased by sympathetic stimulation so these are the uh, you know innervators of uh, follicular activity thyroid stimulating hormone and the sympathetic stimulation the follicular cells secrete two hormones that influence the rate of metabolism aur wo hormones kon kon se hain jo in follicular cell se bante hain um, dono ke liye iodine is important one hormone contain three iodine atoms uh, this is called triiodo thyronine which is t3 more commonly used symbol for that the second hormone contains four atom which is called tetraiodothyronine or t4 okay t3 is much more active in comparison to t4 ab jo synthesis of thyroid hormone hai this is more sort of a physiology topic but let us recap it here the synthesis and release of thyroid hormone takes place in two phases 
In the first phase, thyroglobulin, which is a glycoprotein, is synthesized by the granular endoplasmic reticulum within the follicular cells and is packed into the secretory vacuoles in the Golgi complex. The vacuoles travel to the luminal surface where, they're, where they release thyroglobulin into the follicular cavity by exocytosis. So, the first phase is the protein which is called thyroglobulin. Here, the thyroglobulin combines with the iodine to form the colloid. Now, the iodine is a combination में अगर बनेगा कि तीन आयोडीन एटम यूज होंगे तो T3 बन जाएगा और अगर फोर आयोडीन एटम यूज होंगे तो T4 बन जाएगा ओके और फिर ये सेकंड फेज में होता है इन द सेकंड फेज द पार्टिकल्स ऑफ कोलोइड आर टेकन बैक इनटू द सेल्स बाय एंडोसाइटोसिस विद इन द सेल द आयोडिनेटेड थायरोग्लोबुलिन इज एक्टेड अपॉन बाय द एंजाइम्स रिलीजिंग T3 और T4 डिपेंडिंग अपॉन के आयोडीन कंपोजिशन क्या है द हार्मोन प्रोड्यूस इन द थायरॉइड ग्लैंड इज मेनली T4 uh, but this is less active compared to T3. In the liver, the kidneys, T4 is converted to T3 by removal of one iron. T3 and T4 circulating the blood are bound to the protein, which is called the thyroid binding globulin, TBG. The bound form of hormone is not active. It's only the free form which is active. So, if we look at these steps, so you see what's happening here. Some steps in formation of the thyroid hormones. Glycoprotein synthesized by the follicular cells. This glycoprotein is then iodinated into the colloid, taken back into the follicular cells, and then T3 and T4 are produced and then released into the blood. So these little cells, which are called the uh, follicular cells, they are extremely busy. They are making thyroglobulin, which goes all the level up here, get the iodine, comes back in here, make T3 and T4, and then release them into the circulation. So. Further than this, is key or be biochemistry or physiology here, which we will discuss in um, subsequent sections. Okay, so this was all about the follicular cells, these cells. Okay, follicular cells are the cells which produce the thyroid hormones. Now we have the cells which are other than the follicular cells which are present in the connective tissue. These cells uh, here or here, par bhi hai, hai. these are called the parafollicular cells. So let's see what is the job of the parafollicular C cells. Is quickly getting because they are clear cells or they are light cells. They stain lighter as compared to the follicular cells. The cells are polyhedral with oval eccentric nucleus. Typically, they lie between the follicular cells and the basement membranes. They may, however, lie between the adjoining follicle cells, but they do not reach to the lumen. In some species, many parafollicular cells may lie in the connective tissue. With electron microscopy, the cells show well-developed granular endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi bodies, and numerous uh, membrane-bound secretory granules. C cells share features of the, uh, you know, amine precursor uptake and detoxification cell system, the neuroendocrine system, hai. and therefore they are considered as the part of the neuroendocrine system. Or in me se jo hormone nikalta hai, that is known as thyrocalcitonin. This hormone has an action opposite to that of the parathyroid hormone on the calcium metabolism. So the job of the parathyroid hormone is to absorb more and more calcium and this is uh, doing exactly the opposite job, the thyrocalcitonin. This hormone comes into play when the serum calcium level is very high and you actually want to get rid of the calcium. It tends to lower the calcium level by suppressing the release of the calcium from the bones, also from the gut, also from the kidneys. This is achieved by suppressing bone resorption by the osteoclast. So remember, C cell is an important. These cells are just not sitting here for no purpose they are actually performing some job they are producing a hormone called thyrocalcitonin and it is important for calcium metabolism okay now some conditions hyperthyroidism hypothyroidism they are actually very very common hyperthyroidism also called thyrotoxicosis obviously as the name indicates the thyroid gland is functioning more so it is producing more and more t3 and t4 and therefore the metabolic events which are caused by the t3 and t4 are in the hyperactive state hypothyroidism is a hypometabolic situation just my t3 t4 ka level down hota hai and the symptoms are accordingly Okay, cretinism or congenital hypothyroidism is development of severe hypothyroidism during infancy. Agar hypothyroidism in infancy mein ho jai, the condition is called cretinism. And myxedema is an adulthood hypothyroidism. Ye naam sirf de de na or definition de de na kafi nahi hai. Obviously, in pathology, we have to discuss this in a lot more detail. Graves disease, also known as Bezdow's disease. Sab logon ko Graves disease ka to pata hota hai. But many, uh, few students actually know Bezdow's disease is an equivalent terminology for Graves disease. Anyways, it is 
is um, represented by hyperplasia of the gland, exophthalmus, goiter, diffuse toxic goiter, and associated with thyrotoxicosis, thyroid enlargement, and ophthalmopathy, eyes may problem. Anyways, we will discuss them when we are doing pathology lectures. So, thyroid gland may, jo hit feature hai, wo do tarha ki cells hai, the follicular cells and the parafollicular cell and the colloid in the middle. That's the beauty of histology of thyroid gland. Let's now talk about the parathyroid gland, okay? Another very important set of glands. The parathyroid glands are so called because they lie in close relationship to the thyroid. Actually, this arrangement is like if these are the two lobes of thyroid, this is the isthmus. So they are embedded on the posterior lateral side, actually, like this. So they are embedded within the thyroid gland. So they are very closely related to thyroid gland. Therefore, they are called parathyroid. Normally, there are two parathyroid gland, one superior, one inferior on each side. Yani superior, inferior, superior, inferior. So total char hoga two pairs ho gaya theek hai sometimes there may be as many as eight parathyroid so this number is uh, usually four but it can be eight each gland has a connective tissue capsule from which some septa extend into the gland that's a general structure of a glandular arrangement okay there are uh, you know cells surrounded by a capsule or capsule mein se septa jate hain to different lobules ban jate hain so that's a general structure and there are many fat cells present within the stroma as well. The parenchyma of the gland, which means the cellular architecture, jo cells hote hain kisi bhi gland ke unko hum naam dete hain parenchyma. It is made up of cells arranged in cords and numerous sinusoids lie in close relationship. In sinusoids mein ya capillaries mein ye cells jo bhi banayenge hormone, wo isme enter ho jayega. Now the cells kaun kaun se hote hain parathyroid gland mein at least two types of cells that you should pay attention to. The chief cells which are also called the principal cells and the other category is called the oxyphil cells uh, also known as the eosinophil cells now the chief cells are much more numerous than the oxyphil cells and with the light microscopy the chief cells are seen to be small round cells with vesicular nuclei their cytoplasm is clear and either mildly eosinophilic or basophilic sometimes the cell accumulated glycogen and lipid looks like clear three types of chief cells like dark and clear have been described ye description um, i mean aap padh to lete hain aapko samajh bhi aa jati hai but isko retain rakhna yaad rakhna mushkil kaam hai anyways main is tarah se students ko histology uh, yaad rakhne ka kehta hu ki you should know ki koi bhi organ hai to usme cells kaun se hain aur wo cells kya produce kar rahe hain that is the beauty that you should remember ye light microscopy pe kaisa dikh raha hai electron microscopy pe kaisa dikh raha hai ye vakti taur pe samajh mein bhi aa jayega but ye yaad rakhna bada mushkil hai so with electron microscopy active chi cells are seen to have abundant granular endoplasmic radiculum jo bhi active cell hoga which is producing some protein it will have granular endoplasmic radiculum well developed golgi body because these are associated with production and packaging small secretory granules are seen especially in parts of the cytoplasm near adjacent to the blood sinusoid because ab, again this makes cells na agar ye cell hai aur ye uske dar, uh, aas paas sinusoid hai to yahan towards the sinusoid there will be more and more secretory granules so that they can be released into the sinusoid the chief cells produce parathyroid hormone that this comes something which you cannot afford to forget chief cells mein kaun si cheez banti hai parathyroid hormone this hormone tends to increase the level of serum calcium by different mechanisms for example parathyroid hormone acts on bone and it stimulates the osteoclast activity increasing the calcium level in the blood the um, another activity of parathyroid hormone is on the renal tubule so it reabsorbs it helps in reabsorption of calcium in the renal tubules and then it also enhances absorption of calcium from the gut so these are the three avenues which are tapped by the parathyroid hormone which is produced by the chief cells of the parathyroid gland so the main job of the parathyroid is to increase serum calcium levels okay the other category of cells present in the parathyroid gland is called the oxyphil cells they are much larger and much fewer and they are usually very very acidic their nuclei are smaller and stain more intensely than those of the chief cells they are less numerous than chief cells ye baat hum kar chuke hain the oxyphil cells are absent in young and appear a little before age of puberty okay now with the electron microscopy 
it is seen that the granules of oxyphil cells are really mitochondria, a large number of which are present in the cytoplasm. True secretory granules are not present and their secretory function is actually unknown. Nahi pata ki in mein se kya aisi important cheez nikalti hai, jo endocrine system ka bahut important part hai. But anyways, these cells hain, to aapko in cells ka pata hona chahiye. Okay? Now, some clinical terminology is hyperparathyroidism. The parathyroid hormone is functioning more. And there are actually three types, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary hyperparathyroidism occurs from over-secretion of parathyroid hormone due to disease of the parathyroid. Yani parathyroid ke andar koi hyperplasia ho gaya hai, koi tumor ho gaya. So, this is a primary disease. Secondary hyperparathyroidism is uh, also overproduction of parathyroid hormone, but the disease is somewhere else, not in the parathyroid gland. And the tertiary hyperparathyroidism develops from secondary hyperplasia after removal of the cause of the secondary. Well, this is very uh, confused. Wait for my pathology lectures on hyperparathyroidism. So park it until then. Okay. Now the next category of uh, the endocrine gland that we have to discuss is the suprarenal gland. So let's start our discussion on suprarenal glands. As implied by their name, the right and left suprarenal glands are present uh, close to the upper pole of the corresponding kidney. Yani there will be a kidney like this and in the upper pole there will be a gland called the suprarenal. Renal ke upar, kidney ke upar. Okay. They are therefore commonly called adrenal glands. So, uh, ये इनके different नाम हैं suprarenal glands कह लो या adrenal glands कह लो these are the synonymous words each suprarenal gland is covered by a connective tissue capsule और उसमें से भी septa extend होगा into the gland substance the gland is made up of two functionally distinct part there is an outer portion which is known as the cortex and then there is a middle uh, portion which is known as the medulla the volume of cortex is about ten times that of the medulla so the cortex is bigger and the medulla is less और कॉर्टेक्स की जो लेयर्स हैं दीज लेयर्स ये हमने हमने एनाटॉमी के लेक्चर में भी डिस्कस की हैं बट लेट अस रीकैप हियर द सुप्रारेनल कॉर्टेक्स इज मेड अप ऑफ सेल्स अरेंज इन कॉर्ड्स साइनसोइड्स इंटरवीनिंग बिटवीन द कॉर्ड्स ये अरेंजमेंट है हर जगह देखें देयर आर सेलुलर कॉर्ड्स एंड देन सेलुलर कॉर्ड्स और उनके बीच में साइनसोइड्स हैं यानी कैपिलरी नेटवर्क्स और उनकी स्पेसेस ताकि इन सेल्स में जो भी हार्मोन प्रोड्यूस हो वो इस साइनसोइड में एंटर हो सके ओके और जो कॉर्टेक्स है उसकी तीन लेयर्स हैं the first layer is known as zona yani zone glomerulosa which is the outermost layer here the cells are arranged um, as inverted u shaped formations or acinous like groups the zona glomerulosa contains the outer one fifth of the cortex because it is the outermost layer with the light microscopy the cells of the zona glomerulosa are seen to be small polyhedral or columnar with basophilic cytoplasm and deeply staining nuclei so if you look here at this particular diagram this is the section through the uh, suprarenal gland this is the outermost thing which is the capsule ye capsule ke septa andar ki taraf ja rahe and then if you um, try to identify the layer the first layer which is the outermost layer all this layer this is the zona glomerulosa okay so the first layer is zona glomerulosa and the second layer is then zona fasciculata which is the next layer and uh, they are very rich in lipids that is the identification point okay so these are uh, these are zona zona fasciculata uh, all this layer yahan se leke yahan tak ye jo cell layer nazar aa rahi hai this is all zona fasciculata so first layer zona glomerulosa then zona fasciculata and then obviously there will be the next layer which is uh, uh, zona reticularis so the layer number 4 which is zona reticularis okay to teen layers hoti hain aur in teenon layer se produce hone wale hormones bhi alag alag hain so that's the third layer the zona reticularis uh, electron microscopy pe inke features tamam ke kya hain the golgi complex is best developed in zona fasciculata mitochondria are elongated in glomerulosa try to remember them if you can the suprarenal cortex is essential for life that is an extremely important message guys if there is any problem with the suprarenal cortex you are dead so they are important for you to live. Th uh, their absence, their problems are lethal. Removal or destruction leads to death unless uh, supported by the supplementary hormones. Hormones kon kon se produce hote hain? Zona glomerulosa se, se produce hota hai mineralocorticoid, aldosterone and deoxycorticosterone. These hormones influence the electrolyte and water balance of the body extremely essential. And uh, the secretion of the hormone by the zona glomerulosa is under the control of the hypophysis cerebri pituitary gland.
The cells of the zona fasciculata produce uh, glucocorticoids. So, glomerulosa se mineralocorticoid, yani aldosterone and deoxycorticosterone. Jabki jo next layer hai, zona fasciculata, that produces cortisone and cortisol, which are glucocorticoids. Okay? And they have a profound effect on different metabolisms of the body, such as carbohydrate and protein metabolism. They appear to decrease the antibody response, anti inflammatory effects. So, these are essential for life. Uh, without them, you will be dead. And the last layer, layer which is a reticularis se pehle fasciculata se ek aur cheez nikalti which is very important di uh, dehydroepiandrosterone very important androgen and then the zona reticularis also produces some glucocorticoid sex hormones both estrogen and androgen so three layers or in se produce hone wale teen important hormones suprarenal medulla to ye jo gland tha iske bahar ka sara area cortex tha center mein kya cheez hogi medulla both functionally and embryologically the medulla of the suprarenal gland is distinct from the cortex when a suprarenal gland is fixed in a solution containing a salt of chromium such as uh, potassium dichromate the cells of the medulla show yellow granules in their cytoplasm these are called this is called chromaffin reaction and the cells of the medulla are known as chromaffin cells yeah pheochromocytes pheochromocytoma ka naam suna hai there's a tumor of the medulla the cells of the suprarenal cortex do not give this reaction which means they are very very distinct medulla ke jo cells hain the medulla is made up of group of columns of cells the cells group or column are separated by white sinusoid sinusoid zaruri hai na yani cell mein jo kuch banega wo sinusoid mein hi enter hoga na the cells are columnar or polyhedral and they have a basophilic cytoplasm electron microscope par they are seen to contain abundant granular endoplasmic reticulum strong uh, golgi complexes and this is the part of this is something normal for any gland of the body right the suprarenal medulla is now included in the neuroendocrine system of the body okay acute system aur kaun se hormone nikalte hain functionally the cells of the suprarenal medulla are uh, considered to be modified sunay post ganglionic sympathetic neurons so ye actually jo medulla ke cells hain they are considered as post ganglionic yani inke paas pre ganglionic fibers aa rahe hain suprarenal medulla tak aur yahan pe jo cells hain wo post ganglionic cells hain so basically that is part of the uh, you know autonomic nervous system and they secrete uh, noradrenaline and adrenaline into the blood the secretion takes place mainly at the time of a stress fight or flight situation mein increases the heart rate and blood pressure so cortex mein se teen हार्मोन्स निकल रहे हैं मिनरलोकॉर्टिकाइड ग्लूकोकॉर्टिकाइड एंड्रोजेंस और मेडुला से निकल रहे हैं नॉर एड्रेनालिन एंड एड्रेनालिन नाउ द नेक्स्ट ग्लैंड दैट वी हैव टू डिस्कस इज द पाइनियल ग्लैंड pineal gland yeah sometimes is also known as the pineal body is actually a small uh, structure which is present in relation to the posterior wall of the ventricle of the brain it is also called epiphysis cerebri dekho ye naam aapne confuse nahi karna ek aur naam isse milta julta humne padha tha which is known as hypophysis cerebri hypophysis cerebri is the other name for uh, the pituitary gland main anterior pituitary likhne laga tha but the hypophysis uh, cerebri is the other name for pituitary gland and epiphysis cerebri is the other name for pineal gland sahi hai acha ji now is gland ke microscopic features the section of the pineal gland is stained with hematoxylin and eosin reveal very little details the organ appears to be mass of cells amongst which are the blood capillaries a distinctive feature of pineal gland in such section is the presence of irregular masses made up mainly of calcium salts these masses constitute the corpora arenacea or the brain sand sunne dimag mein matti bari hui hai you have brain sand which is also known as corpora arenacea which is present in the pineal gland the organ is covered by the connective tissue representing the pyometer from which the septa passes into the anterior nothing new for you pinealocytes the organ is made up of cells which are called pinealocyte abhi maine bataya na yeah this containing a lot of cells masses of cells so these cells are called pinealocyte each cell has a polyhedral body containing a spherical oval or irregular nucleus the cell body gives off long processes with extending uh, uh, you know expanding terminal buds that end in the relation to the wall of capillaries and release their structure into the blood 
अभी देखते हैं क्या रिलीज होता है द सेल बॉडीज ऑफ द पाइनलसाइट्स कंटेन बोथ गोल्जा कॉम्प्लेक्स एंडोप्लाजम रेडिकुलम माइट्रोकॉन्ड्रिया ओके ये हमें पता है एन ऑर्गेनिल ऑफ अनयूजुअल स्ट्रक्चर मेड अप ऑफ ग्रुप ऑफ माइक्रोफाइब्रल्स एंड परफोरेटेड लेमिना मे बी प्रेजेंट नॉट हाई ईल्ड आई वुड नॉट रिकमेंड रिमेम्बरिंग दिस द प्रोसेस ऑफ पाइनलोसाइट कंटेन न्यूमरस माइट्रोकॉन्ड्रिया अपार्ट फ्रॉम अदर ऑर्गेनिल्स द टर्मिनल बर्ड्स कंटेन वेजिकल्स इन विच द मोनो अमाइंस एंड पॉलीपेप्टाइड हॉर्मोन्स आर एक्चुअली स्टोर्ड the neurotransmitter gamma amino butyric acid is also these are all the things which are present within the pinealocytes or ab hormone kaun sa banta hai the pinealocyte produce a number of hormones chemically they are all called indolamines or polypeptides these hormones have an important regulating influence chiefly inhibitory on many other endocrine organs so they are kind of inhibitor negative check the organ influence जो जो ऑर्गन इसे इन्फ्लुएंस होते हैं दे इंक्लूड एजीनो हाइपोफिसिस न्यूरो हाइपोफिसिस एंड द थायरोइड ग्लैंड एंड द पैराथायरोइड ग्लैंड द एड्रिनल कॉर्डेक्स एंड द मेडुला ओ माय गॉड सो पाइनल ग्लैंड इज अ लिटिल स्मॉल ग्लैंड व्हिच एक्चुअली काइंड ऑफ इनहिबिट द फंक्शन ऑफ ऑल दीज ग्लैंड्स द हॉर्मोन्स ऑफ द आपको याद है मैंने बताया था कि पिचुटरी ग्लैंड इज द मास्टर ग्लैंड ऑफ योर बॉडी तो पिचुटरी के फंक्शंस को रेगुलेट कर रहा था एक तो हाइपोथैलेमस और अब ये दूसरी चीज आई है Pineal gland जो inhibit करता है बहुत सारे functions को ठीक है The best known hormone of the pineal gland is the melatonin, so called because it causes skin color um, in amphibia. Large concentrations of melatonin are present in the pineal gland. Considerable amount of 5-hydroxy tryptamine. which is also called serotonin which is precursor to melatonin is also present the presence of related enzyme has been demonstrated so melatonin guys physiology mein padhenge kitni important cheez hai aapke normal cycles ko control karne ke liye so um, uh, park it again physiology stuff but uh, for now in the histology context you should know ki the pinealocytes have negative effect on so many other endocrine glands and they have a lot of melatonin okay interstitial cells bhi hote hain pine Uh, gland me and uh, they are in close proximity to blood vessels and lymphatics and uh, they are kind of uh, you know supporting cells right now cyclic activity of the pineal gland actually jo biological clock hai aapki jo aapke body mein circadian rhythms hain usme iska major role hai uske control mein the synthesis and discharge of melatonin is remarkably influenced by exposure of the animal to the light the pineal gland being the most active in darkness the neurological pathway concern involve the hypothalamus and the sympathetic nerves because of this light mediated response the pineal gland may act as kind of a biological clock so ye word aapke liye zaruri hai ke this is your biology aapko jo raat ko neend aati hai so that sort of thing you know aapko apne timings ka pata hota hai so the internal biological clock of your body is the pineal gland isse zyada details hum padhenge jab hum iski physiology discuss karenge now to end the chapter there are a couple of uh, uh, terminology is that you should understand there are some other organs having endocrine functions such as paraganglia aggregation of cells similar to those of the adrenal medulla adrenal medulla mein post ganglionic fibers the jo developmentally bilkul different the humne ye baat ki thi is tarah aur bahut sari jagahon jagahon par chote uh, chote you know cells ka ek uh, group jama hota hai which uh, are known as paraganglia they are collectively referred refer to as paraganglia because most of them are present in close relation to the autonomic ganglia the cells of the paraganglia give a positive chromaffin reaction same as we discussed in the adrenal medulla they receive a preganglionic uh, innervation and they have secretory granule containing catecholamines in their cytoplasm yani ye jo cells honge inme koi na koi preganglionic fiber aake feed karega aur inme se catecholamines release honge like the cells of the adrenal medulla the paraganglia are believed to develop from the cells of the neural crest so ye inka embryological origin hai they are highly vascularized they are regarded as the endocrine glands because they produce uh, catecholamines and they are also considered as part of the acute system your neuroendocrine system cells similar to those of the paraganglia are also present with some sympathetic ganglia they are called sif for small intensely fluorescent cells here they are believed to act as interneurons is something not very relevant at the moment so but paraganglia aapko pata hona chahiye so this is a group of cells behaving exactly like the adrenal medulla in different parts of the body then there are para aortic bodies 
These are two elongated bodies that lie one on each side of the aorta near the origin of the inferior mesenteric. So, where the inferior mesenteric artery uh, nikalti hai, us jagah par these are the structures which are present. The two masses may be united to each other by a band passing across the aorta. These bodies have a structure similar to that of the adrenal medulla. So, these are also paraganglia. Ki tarah hai. और एड्रिनल मेडुला की तरह हैं, but because ये एयोटा के एड गिर्द हैं, तो इनका नाम है पैरा एयोटिक बॉडीज, ठीक है? They secrete noradrenaline and the aortic bodies retrogress with age. Then there are another group of cells called the carotid bodies. These are small oval structures present one on each side of the neck at the bifurcation of the common carotid artery. The carotid bodies contain a network of capillaries and uh, in the interval between which are several types of cells. Or con -con types of cells hain? The most conspicuous, sabse zyada jo cell hain, they are called the glomus cells or the type 1 cells of the carotid body. These are large cells have several similarities to neurons actually as follows. They give off dendritic processes, their cytoplasm contain membrane bound granules and a lot of neurotransmitters are present. The cells are in synaptic contact with afferent neurons. So, these tamam properties inko actually match karwati hai, uh, glomus cells ko ke the glomus cells are uh, maybe they are, uh, you know, some cousins and brothers and sisters of neurons. So they behave like neurons. Because these similarities to neurons um, and because of the possibility that these cells release dopamine also, they are sometimes described as neuroendocrine cells, yeah, epute system. The exact significance of the glomus cells and of their nervous connection is not entirely understood, but maybe in future we do. Dopamine released by them may influence the sensitivity of the chemoreceptor nerve endings present in the carotid bodies. Apart from the glomus cells, there are some other cells, for example, sheath cells, they are supporting cells, a few sympathetic and parasympathetic postganglionic neurons, endothelial cells of blood vessels, some connective tissue cells. Carotid body ki nerve supply kya hoti hai? Ye to humne anatomy mein paar rakha. There are afferent nerve terminals from the glossopharyngeal. There are preganglionic sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers coming in. There are postganglionic fibers coming in from the sympathetic as well as parasympathetic system uh, via the walls of the arterioles. Or function kya hai carotid bodies ka? Uh, they are basically chemoreceptors that monitor the oxygen and carbon dioxide levels in the blood. So that's their job. They reflexly control the rate and depth of respiration through the respiratory center located in the brainstem. So based on the, you know, uh, the blood gases levels in the body, they interact with the brainstem to either increase the respiratory rate or decrease the respiratory rate. So they are the chemoreceptors of the body which sense the level of oxygen and carbon dioxide. In addition to this function, the carotid bodies are also believed to have an endocrine function. What endocrine function is not very clear uh, as of today. Okay? Right. So, that is all basically um, about the endocrine. One uh, organ we have discussed nahi kiya, and that is pancreas. But pancreas is a uh, video video that is discussed somewhere else. In another chapter, where they have discussed gastrointestinal part, discuss kiya hai, to pe pancreas discuss hua hai. Wahi exocrine pancreas bhi discuss hua hai, or endocrine pancreas bhi discuss hua hai. Isi liye is chapter ka part pancreas nahi hai. So, the last bit which I have to discuss is the epute system. Kai humne the neuroendocrine system. Ki. So let us talk about the epute system and then we close this stuff. Apart from the discrete endocrine organs considered in the chapter, there are a group of endocrine cells is scattered throughout the body. We have thyroid gland, we have pineal gland, we have suprarenal gland. These are all organized endocrine tissues. Hain. But body mein kahin -kahin kuch cells that behave the endocrine system and are part of the epithelia. Ka part hote so those are called the um, neuroendocrine system or the epute cell system. These peptide or amine serves as hormones, which are Many of them also function as neurotransmitters. Hence, the epute cell system is also called the diffuse neuroendocrine system. These two names you should know that the epute system is the diffuse neuroendocrine system. The cells of this system contain spherical or oval membrane-bound granules or dense core. There is an electrolucent halo around these. Well, this is irrelevant detail. Some of the cells included in the epute or diffuse neuroendocrine system also give the positive chromaffin reaction, just like the adrenal medulla. Okay.
the diffuse neuroendocrine system is regarded as representing the link between the autonomic nervous system ye sari philosophical debate i am not interested actually main isko abhi i am just going over it because mujhe jo cheez samjhani hai isme wo biochemistry mein hum discuss karenge ki how do they process the amino acid and release their hormones so we will talk about them when we do the biochemistry but for now just remember ki aapki body mein organized endocrine gland ke sath sath throughout the body there are diffuse endocrine cells वो एंडोक्राइन सेल्स आपके नॉर्मल एपिथेलियल पार्ट्स में इधर उधर बॉडी में फैले हुए हैं सो ये एप्यूट सेल्स पूरी बॉडी में फैले हुए हैं एंड दे आर आल्सो कंसीडर्ड एंडोक्राइन सेल्स सो विद दिस वी फिनिश दिस चैप्टर ऑन द एंडोक्राइन सिस्टम हिस्टोलॉजी आपसे मुलाकात होगी नेक्स्ट वीडियो में बहुत जल्द तब तक के लिए अपना ख्याल रखिएगा